Good morning, friends. Today we will learn about rabies vaccine. Now, when we are giving this uh, profile axis, so we should know what type of wound it is. So the patient has been divided into three categories. Uh, category one cases are those where there is no risk of rabies. So what type of exposure is there? That is either the person has only uh, that is there is only the history of touching or feeding the animal. And there is, if there is leaking, then it will be on the intact skin. So there will be no uh, recommended prophylaxis for that. Then category two, that is a case of minor risk. So when there are minor scratches or abrasions, but there is no bleeding and there is no nibbling of the uncovered skin. So there is no bleeding. Now what we will do, that is there will be wound management and rabies vaccine and observe the dog for 10 days, but there will be no immunoglobulins, which is the passive form of prophylaxis. So that will not be needed. Then there comes the category three. So in category three, that is a case of major risk. And there are single or multiple transdermal bites. That means now there is a uh, bite of the tissue. So there will be either there will be oozing of blood or leaking on the broken skin or uh, mucous membrane or direct contact with the bats or wild animals. So when there is a history of bite with the wild animals, then it is directly come in the case of the major risk. So in this you need the wound management, immunoglobulins also and vaccine. Now comes the local treatment. So what will you do in the local treatment? Uh, so when there is any bite of uh, wound has to be washed immediately with a uh, lot of water under the tap with soap and at least for 10 minutes. Then the wound is treated with the citavalon tincture alcohol, so mild antiseptic type. Uh, only these things can be used. Then in severe wound, antirabic serum may be applied topically. That means the immunoglobulins. So that can be filtered around the wound when it will be available. And uh, suturing, we usually prefer that the wound should not be sutured because it can spread the virus uh, infection. So therefore, until unless if it is very uh, needed, if there is so much uh, this tissue has been destroyed, so there if we need the suturing, then the suturing should be very loose type. Otherwise, try to avoid it. And anti tetanus measure and the antibodies are given so that if there is some uh, chance of tetanus infection, so that can be prevented. So that means what are the key points for treatment? That is properly washing the wound with lot of water and mild soap, and then wound is treated with mild antiseptic like of iodine or alcohol, and suturing should not be done until unless uh, very much needed anti tetanus and antibodies. Then comes the profile axis. So in profile axis, there could be pre-exposure or post-exposure. Usually it's post-exposure profile axis. That is uh, when the, there is uh, some history of animal bite. So at that time, there's a risk of rabies uh, virus infection. So uh, we need the post-exposure immunization. But certain persons are very high risk who are uh, veterinary doctors or having pets or they are working in the lab where they have to make the, uh, these samples to process for these viruses. So they are at risk, so therefore pre-exposure immunization is being done. Then the vaccines, vaccines are of two types, neural and non-neural. Neural vaccine means that is the vaccine which have been formed from the nervous tissue of the animal. So the nervous tissue of the animal being infected with the fixed rabies virus. So uh, and then these vaccines are being inactivated with some of the chemical. Like one is the simple vaccine which is developed at CRI Casoli. So it's may uh, they use sheep <coughs> sheep uh, sheep five percent brain sus uh, brain suspension of sheep, and that has to be inactivated with the phenol. In case of beta propulectron vaccine, instead of phenol, we are using beta propulectron and they are more antigenic. Then third is the infant brain vaccine, where is the 
uh, neural tissue of this newborn mice has been uh, infected with the fixed virus. Now, what are the disadvantages for this neural vaccine? That is, they are poorly immunogenic, and uh, uh, that means poorly immunogenic means uh, the level of antibody that should be formed that is very less, so uh, not achieving the target. The second thing, they may contain the latent virus not inactivated properly during the vaccine preparation and storage. And third is they can cause an encephalitis. So that is very uh, important for this vaccine. Therefore, they are not being used in the developed countries uh, because of so much side effects. And But in developing countries, uh, maybe they are using because of the cheapness. Non-neural vaccines, that is the one is the egg vaccine. So where they are using the egg, that is the embryo. So one is the duck embryo vaccine, that is the fixed virus is allowed to grow in the duck egg. And then it is inactivated by the BPL. The second is the live veterinary chick embryo vaccine. So uh, in which uh, this virus which has been grown in the embryo that has to be uh, Passage. Passage means moving from one egg to the another. So that is being called as passage. So there can be low egg passage or high egg passage. Then comes the recombinant vaccine. So in recombinant vaccine, vaccine virus has been used for carrying the rabies surface glycoprotein. Third is the cell culture drive vaccine where the cell lines being used. So one is a purified chick embryo cell in which chicken fibroblast cell line be used. Second is the purified vero cell. It is a continuous cell line used. And third is a human deployed cell line. So where the human cells have been used. So this is the most preferred uh, method which is being used nowadays for preparation of the rabies vaccine, human deployed cell vaccine. So there can be two routes by which you can inoculate this vaccine that is the interdermal or intramuscular. So when we are giving through the intramuscular route, so deltoid area is being preferred in case of adults in children and to little respect of thigh. Usually we avoid this gluteal region because there is a lot of fat there and which can hamper the effect of this vaccine. Then uh, if we are giving the intradermal 0.1 ml of vaccine is uh, sufficient for intramuscular whole of the vial of the vaccine is being used. Vaccination schedule. Then uh, so there is a post exposure. So if we are giving by intradermal route. So uh, in intradermal you have to give at two sites. That means uh, the day 0, day 0, day 3, day 7. So day zero does not mean that on the day when there is a bite history, but it is the day on uh, the day from where you have started the vaccination. So that is the day zero. So two site at two site on a single day the vaccine is given 037.1 ml of the vaccine. If if we are going for the intramuscular vaccine one site, so it will be 037. And four doses has to be given from 14 to 28 any day. So four doses are being given. Post exposure in already vaccinated person. So if they are already vaccinated before the bite, so uh, only few doses are needed like zero and three. So if it is one site interdema vaccine given on days zero and three, one site intermuscular vaccine given in uh, day zero and three. If only the vaccine has to be given only on the single day, then the four side ID vaccine is given that is left in the deltoid, thigh, or suprascapular areas. Pre exposure vaccination that is for the veterinary, all those persons who have the risk of getting the infection. So, two site in the number vaccine given on day 0 and 7. For intermuscular, only one side that is 0 and 7. And it provides the lifetime protection, no need to take the these boosters periodically. Then the passive immunization. Uh, so passive immunization means the already the preformed antibodies are being injected 
in the person so they are very useful in the severe cases when there is a major risk of getting the uh, rabies infection so in that case uh, these immunoglobulins are being given two type of immunoglobulins are there one is the purified equine rabies immunoglobulin which is being pre uh, prepared in the horse serum and uh, second one is the human rabies immunoglobulin so uh, this one is more useful there are less hypersensitivity reaction uh, when we go for this equine rabies immunoglobulin there can be chance of serum sickness usually we prefer human rabies immunoglobulin and uh, it has to be given in the uh, dose of 20 international unit per kg body weight half volume uh, usually it's not the half volume that is the it is being preferred maximum uh, of this immunoglobulin should be given at the site of bite and if something is remained that you can inject in the some other area maybe in the gluteal region but it should be far from the vaccine area vaccine uh, uh, near the vaccine area you cannot inject otherwise it will neutralize the effect of vaccine and the vaccine will not work so therefore uh, they should be distant from the vaccine so that is all for the rabies vaccine if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you